Jacob here. Today we're going to be looking at the Banu Merchantman. This is quite the ship as far as lore, size, and well, questions are concerned. A lot of people, including myself, are looking forward to this ship. There's one group of people that want the ship in an ideally reasonable length of time. Best case scenario, perhaps late 2021. Probably 2022, in my opinion. There's those that recognise that the mechanics behind the ship aren't remotely in place, meaning that implementing this ship would be merely adding another reclaimer to the game, so to speak. Although true, this isn't my opinion entirely, which we'll talk about as we go. I've researched the Banu a fair amount, and what I say here is backed by my research. What I don't mention here either means there is no evidence of it, or I simply didn't find this research or didn't feel the need to mention it. As always, see the chapters for whatever you are interested in. I do ramble, so these may not be entirely accurate, with my own added speculation and theories, as always. Let's not forget to sub up to keep up with the content. We'll talk about the Banu manufacturer first. What I thought I noticed initially is the manufacturer literally just says Banu on the RSI site. However, with further investigation, the manufacturer is specifically called Banu Sully. The word Sully is a mountainous region in what is now part of Western Greece, originally settled by Greek and Albanian refugees from the Ottomans. Of course, this area was eventually to be part of Western Greece, following the rebellion against Ottoman rule. Small history lesson there, I'm no history teacher, so don't quote me. Oddly enough, in Banu, Sully means guilds. The Banu don't have a government, so to speak, they have city-states. And this is obviously where Sully comes from. As from my amazing history lesson, the ancient Greece had over a thousand city-states, i.e. Sparta, Athens, etc. Or perhaps they just like a particular cafe in London that I randomly came across, who knows. Regardless, these guilds are responsible for the individual operations of the Banu, such as manufacturing, catering, hell, even just raising young Banu. There is a Sully for a lot of things, so it isn't a specific manufacturer for the Banu ships, so to speak. It is in fact the Banu that make them, or at least a Sully. So with that in mind, there isn't really much lore that I could find about the Banu ship manufacturer. However, what I definitely can't find is any evidence to suggest the Banu ships are grown. What is grown is the space stations from ships, and there is an organic means in which these are grown. Like pretty much all the ships I overview, you can't get your hands on the merchantman whenever you wish. Given that this ship was first introduced in 2013, although it is possible, it's somewhat difficult to get hold of original concept sales of this particular ship on the grey market. It took me a good 10 minutes to find an original concept merchantman on the grey market, going for slightly more than what the current war bond price would be at $360. Another option for obtaining this ship would be the concierge packs, as always. The lowest priced pack with the merchantman is the convoy pack. A good pack overall, in my opinion. The next best way, in my opinion, is going to be the upcoming Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, or IAE, for short. People do speculate a price increase for the merchantman, so if you are interested in the merchantman, if the price isn't increasing this year, it may well increase in 2021. The Merchantman will for sure be the biggest ship the Banu will ever offer. The Merchantman is a highly prized possession to the individual or groups of Banu and tends to be passed down from generation to generation of Banu families and or Sully. It was in fact the Banu Merchantman that was attacked in the Davian system, of which is where the introduction between humanity and Banu took place. There is quite the lore story for this, which I won't go into here, however. The Banu Defender must of course have a brief mention here, given that in law, the Defender, or Defenders, will be alongside the Merchantman, typically speaking. With that in mind, the general organic feel of the Defender and Merchantman, I can't help but think that it would be really cool if the Defender or Defenders could dock with the Merchantman, similarly to how the Constellations will work and how the uh, Snub Fighters will dock with that. This idea does kind of clash with how the Defender has a pretty large quantum fuel tank, which with it being able to go to and from Microtech to Arcorp at least twice on a single tank of quantum fuel, the Merchantman, regardless, will still outpace it and still have fuel to spare either way. With that in mind, the Defender being as long distance as it is almost feels wasted. 
However, this could, however, mean or suggest that the defender, or any other ship for that matter, can't and won't be able to dock with the merchantman, ever. The merchantman will have significant gameplay from a trading, bazaar, and general economy perspective. It is still somewhat unclear the full mechanics behind the merchantman, although we are aware already somewhat about the general market mechanics present at this time. One advantage the merchantman has over its competition, such as the Hull Sea, is its ability to land planetside. Not to mention the merchantman has various other benefits over the Hull Sea, such as firepower, shields, armor, as well as hull strength, although it does require two additional crew members. The other competitor, of course, has to be the privateer. This is generally more superior to the merchantman from pretty much all perspectives, mainly shields and weapons, and more or less equal from a cargo perspective, and likely inferior as far as armor and hull strength are concerned. Well, because Drake. Additionally, I haven't been able to find any concrete evidence of this, but SCU calculations may have changed since the merchantman was said to have its 3584 SCU of cargo. This may only end up being around 1000 or so SCU. I'll touch more on cargo in the summary. As far as physical size is concerned, the beam and length of the merchantman is the same at 160 meters, while the height is 65 meters. This is comparable to the Polaris, of which is 155 meters in length. As for beam, it sits between the Idris and Javelin, Idris being 125 and the Javelin being 198. The same story applies to the height directly between the Idris and the Javelin, the Idris being 46 meters, the Javelin being 72 meters, and of course a reminder that the Merchantman again is sitting at 65 meters. With a ship this size it would need quite a lot of thrust to even think about being able to take off from a planet or moon's surface. The Idris will be able to do this as per what we already know about the Idris. It'll be a shed load easier however for the Merchantman, given that it is apparently four times lighter than the Idris. Let's not forget the dimensions of this thing. You can forget the idea of the Merchantman getting into a large hangar, this just isn't going to happen. Not just because of the width, but also height. With these statements in mind, it surprises me that the Merchantman being virtually a capital sized ship features nothing anywhere near capital capabilities, as far as component sizes and weapons are concerned at least. However, let's not forget this is an alien ship, and as far as the Banu are concerned, they don't need such capabilities generally speaking. As long as they can protect the vast amount of storage, they are fine, nobody has a need to attack them, because trading is their ally and their defense. On the subject of components, the Merchantman features a large radar, two medium computers, two large power plants, coolers, shield generators, fuel intakes, and fuel tanks. And finally, one large quantum drive, jump drive, and quantum fuel tank. As far as thrusters are concerned, there is two very obvious VTOL thrusters underneath, one towards the front, in front of where the cargo bay would seem to be, and another towards the back of the ship. There is a different concept image, however, which would appear to have the VTOL on the wings. There are two retro thrusters, as well as three absurdly large main thrusters, as well as 12 fixed maneuvering thrusters. The thrusters on this ship are huge, and so they actually should be, given that this is aimed as a blockade runner after all. I'd very much be curious of the speeds of the merchantman, but these stats are disclosed on the RSI site. Expect it to be surprisingly fast for its size, as per how the ship is designed. Moving on to weapons, all weapons on the merchantman are remote turrets, other than the weapons controlled by the pilot, of which would seem to be three single mounted size 6 turrets. There is an additional empty slot for a single mounted size 6 weapon, lastly two remote size 5 dual mounted laser repeaters. With these two turrets in mind, it's relatively easy to identify that these two turrets are the rear-facing turrets pictured in this particular image. These are apparently rear-facing as per what is stated, however looking at this image, they kind of look forward-facing to me. As for the pilot's size 6 weapons, there is apparently three of them. I'm just going to assume that the front retractable weapons are the pilot weapons, because that makes sense. But there is only two turrets here, of course. Where's the third? Let's not forget that there is a vacant size 6 weapon somewhere on this ship. But because all the weapons are concealed, we have no idea where it actually is. 
Additionally, if the rear turrets are size 5, I think the front turrets are bigger than size 6. However, I think what we are looking at is merely just inconsistency between the stats and concept images. More on this in the summary. Also to note, if I had control of these front mounted weapons, I'd have gimbal weapons and just shoot the nose of the ship off if I could. Just for the shits and giggles. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't be able to, but let's be honest, you'd want to see if you could. Last thing I want to mention is on this image again. These two sentences trigger me for so many reasons. Just saying. Moving swiftly onto the floor plan, what I will say is a floor plan image we have here is when the Banning Merchantman was going to be 100 meters in length rather than the 160 meters that it currently is. Because in this floor plan, there just isn't a right lot going on at all. For example, what would appear to be the shopping area in this image just isn't in this floor plan whatsoever. Evidently, this must have been added sometime after the initial concept. The floor plan, as before, is definitely lackluster. We've literally just a cargo room, negotiation room, living quarters, and a cockpit area. There's no mention of anything like a medical bay, catering area, or engineering area for that matter. I could take a guess and say the engineering segment is just an area at the back of the cargo area. That would be a fair assumption. The negotiation room could quite easily be a somewhat multi-purpose catering area, hidden away behind the walls or whatever. We already know that Banu could pretty much hide rooms with how the doors work, however I don't see how a med bay would fit into the ship floor plan. Given that this is meant to be a flagship to the Banu, and I quote, the Banu merchantman isn't just a ship, it's a home and a way of life. With this statement alone, to me the merchantman is missing a whole lot of what it should have, not just a medical bear. Again, the floor plan we have here doesn't seem to even consider the bazaar, which is only the most important part of the merchantman, other than the cargo hold perhaps. The floor plan was apparently a work in progress at the time. This is increasingly evident just from looking here, so apparently the living quarters are also for doing negotiations, not just the observation room. If we actually look at the living quarters, I don't see a negotiation means here. I mean, I guess this navigation table, you could kind of negotiate at this table. I mean, why not? It's just a table. But if you think about it, so could the sleeping quarters. I mean, I haven't researched the Banu much, but maybe they are just kinky bastards, for all I know. Maybe there is some kinky sully that has these kind of negotiation strategies, for all I know. I mean, let's be honest, it's far more likely that this is just a lazy copy and paste, but I had to mention this for the shits and giggles. So to summarise the merchantman, the concept to me is an absolute mess. Thankfully John Crew is fully aware of this, and he has specifically said in the Star Citizen Live vehicle Q&A that took place over the Invictus week, 2950, that the concept was inconsistent and that he'd ideally want to get everything on paper, get it all set in stone to where it all makes sense. From writing this script for this video, I began to realise more and more that there's far too much inconsistency from the concept. So from this image, for example, the VTOL is clearly on the wings of the ship. This from what I'm aware is from the first lot of concept images. A decent amount of people referred this over the later concepts of a merchantman, even to the point where there are actual petitions for retaining the original concept. I almost see why. The original concept is sleek, and with the later images, the VTOL kind of looks like what is commonly known in the US as garbage shoes. So with the original concept in mind, it kind of gives me the vibes of wherever this thing is from the various Marvel films, with the engine fan things on each corner, and the destiny from Stargate Universe. Overall, I wouldn't go as far as signing a petition. My opinion might be different if I had bought an original concept way back in 2013, However, onto other subjects, the floor plan is incomplete. It's missing rooms that should be in a ship of this size, like a medical bay that we touched on before. The stats of the ship are almost completely irrelevant from the RSI website, and the weapon loads, loadouts stated here, and comparing this to the concept images, aren't remotely similar, and make zero sense. Furthermore, there were rumours that the merchantman is going to be smaller. I've yet to find the source of this, other than what John Crew said at some point about the merchantman potentially having less cargo capacity. No specifics were stated here, however. This could even just be due to the SCU calculation changes that may or may not have happened. If you can shed any light on this, then I'd be very interested. I believe this is from the 3.0.0 patch notes, but I could be wrong. 
In my opinion, making the merchantman smaller would only limit what would appear to be an already limited ship. This in itself puts the merchantman in a not so great position of being potentially feature packed or lackluster. This is ultimately due to the price of the merchantman as an example. The Orion was pretty much doubled in size and thus doubled in price. In order to pack what is required into the merchantman for it to suit the role of not just a flagship of a manufacturer, but a flagship of an entire civilization, it will need to be more expensive than the $350 asking price that it currently goes for. In other words, if it increases in price, this may well be a good thing for the merchantman. So to conclude, I'd have a merchantman in a heartbeat. Yes, I've been negative somewhat in this video, but that is mainly due to how the concept has been handled. Seeing past all of this, the merchantman is exceptional and is one of the ships I'm most looking forward to overall. So long as the general law behind the Banu and the Banu merchantman as a whole is in fact carefully and precisely factored into the final merchantman design, then all should be well and up to everyone's final expectation. I just hope that it is done correctly. No pressure, John. No pressure. That will be all for the Banu Merchantman. So as before, I want to schedule weekly content alongside the overview videos such as these. I'd like to think that the earliest this would be would be this weekend. However, given that I'm recording this uh, 6 p.m. on a Saturday, I would expect next weekend to be more ideal. There's a couple of more items that I'm expecting to arrive, such as a camera cage, and after that, a teleprompter, because that would be like super cool for my uh, weekly content. So I know you lot are skeptical about my channel given that I only have this amount of subscribers, but you've made it this far so you're clearly interested, and this is how many of you actually subscribed. So do me a huge favour and subscribe. Do it. Do it. Do it! Also giveaways at 750 and 1000 subs as long as you've commented on videos. Thank you ever so much for watching. Today's video sponsor is the like button for the glorious YouTube algorithm. That'll of course allow this channel to grow with your support. Obviously don't forget to comment or subscribe if you haven't already. If you aren't aware, I generally upload once or twice a week, so be sure to check back. My name is Jacob. Thank you and goodbye for now.